sorry, Evan. So we are copying the slides to this new computer. Taking this time, maybe I can introduce myself a bit. Uh, so I'm from the University of Edinburgh, and I graduated, uh, graduated from Tsinghua University actually a few years ago, and now I'm an independent fellow at Edinburgh. And this work is uh, together with Chandan Bose, uh, assistant professor in Birmingham. Uh, uh, actually, my my talk was uh, located to the offshore renewable uh, session tomorrow, but my flight is uh, tomorrow morning, so I had to switch to this FSI session, but actually my work can be extended to FSI, but currently it's only aesthetic fluid mechanics and flow control in uh, wind and tidal energy. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so that's the title of my research is Mitigating Tip Ortices Through Local Permeability. Uh, and as I just introduced myself and my collaborator, I won't re repeat, but how to go to next, okay, cool. So first of all, I would like to introduce the background. So my research is uh, on the tibosis. So tibosis is formed driven by the pressure difference between the uh, pressure set and suction set of a blade or a wing, and there will be tip flows goes uh, go up uh, from the blade tip and then enrolled into this uh, large scale vortex structure. It's a long standing and common problem for many applications. For example, a wind turbine or tidal turbine, we see this. Uh, tip vortex structure pro, uh, generated and propagated downstream and generate a wake and this wake will interact with the downstream turbine so that will be actually a FSI uh, problem. So if we can control or mitigate the tip vortices we can reduce the unsteady loadings for the downstream turbines and also it's caused the uh, similar problems for the winds of aircraft and cause uh, induced drug things. And the other problem uh, that exists in underwater systems, uh, for example, a propeller or a tail turbine, is that this tube vortex structure will generate a, su a suction peak of your, uh, of your pressure, and this low pressure will cause a new ph phenomenon called cavitation, which will uh, collapse and then damage your blade. Uh, this is a video. I'm not sure whether it can be played or not. Probably cannot. So, yeah, I need to skip it. Basically, that's the experiment uh, realization of the tip vortexes with uh, exist here for propeller and then damages the blade. Uh, okay. And here is just a uh, basically an analytical analysis of the risk of cavitation uh, for a tidal turbine. So we have the water surface here and place the tidal turbine here. And this is the blade tip and the distance between the water surface and here is the water depth basically for the blade tip. And here because of this existence of tube water says you will have a minimum low pressure here and this low pressure will cause cavitation uh, I won't uh, talk about all of these equations, but the conclusion would be that uh, the critical cavitation number is correlated to the minimum CP and the water depth and your tip speed ratio of your turbine and the tidal current speed. So if we take the other, const uh, the other variables as constant, we only consider the CP minimum, the water depth, and the tip speed ratio, we'll see that uh, the tip speed ratio of the turbine is constrained by the, uh, by the uh, minimum CP. So basically, when you have different uh, minimum pressure coefficients, cavitation will happen at different tip speed ratios. So your turbine cannot rotate faster because the cavitation will happen under some conditions. So uh, therefore, we performed the simulations for a tidal turbine, uh, which is experimentally tested by Oxford last year. So, and we contributed to the simulation work. So we take this turbine, 
and we modeled a third of the domain with the periodic interface, and we performed a well-resolved run simulation with VPLUS around 0.3, and we use simple uh, simple form solver and uh, pressure coupling. We use simple uh, simple C and uh, all second order schemes and uh, around 20 million uh, structural meshes for a third of the Tiban. And the uh, this outer boundary is basically uh, 2.5 diameter away from the axis, and we have around 20. Uh, diameters domain lens. Oh, sorry. So here is a comparison between our CFD and experiment, and also we did uh, another simulation with BEM blade element momentum theory. So we compared all the results, and we see that CFD with on form uh, give us a overall better prediction than BEM compared to uh, to the experiment. Uh, especially for the pressure, uh, sorry, for the power uh, coefficient, but for thrust coefficients, actually BM give us a better comparison. So we have a separate papers to discuss about the reason for this, but I won't uh, talk too much about that. So, but eventually we go to the flow control of uh, tip uh with a new concept called permeable tip. So. We try to, uh, so this is a cross section of the blade uh, along the combat direction, and then you see the original schematic of the tip vortices. So what we do is to introduce a permeable zone, and here in our simulation is modeled by porous media, and then by adding this, we can allow different amount of fluid to go through this permeable zone to interact with the tip vortices. And we would like to see what will happen if we do that. And this is the mesh we generated for the blade. And you see we have a thin layer of permeable zone. And it's very, uh, the spam as extent is very limited. It's only 0.1% of the turbine diameter. So its influence on the uh, turbine performance is very small. But if you make a big change to the tip vortices, so here we have the, all the parameters and we solve this Navier-Stokes sc equation in the passive zone, but in the porous zone, we added the, uh, this darcy uh, uh equation. So, but for the CF, we, are not con uh, con uh, we do not consider this because the local speed inside the porous zone is small and we only consider the uh, Darcy number actually. And here, the, uh, this is the solver we are using, and we set a uniform permeability and based on the blade tip thickness uh, and the uh, permeability, uh, the uniform perme uh, permeability couple, we define the uh, Darcy number, and these are turbine diameters, and as I mentioned, it's only 0.1% of the turbine diameter uh, of the power stone. And we also did a validation on a 2D porous disk uh, with the previous porous media model we just mentioned. And we get a, in general, good match with the 2D porous disk. Uh, and this is actually performed by my co collaborator, Chen and Bose. And start from this point, we would like to see whether uh, this will work well with this turbine with a permeable tip but actually it did not at the very beginning because there is a problem for coupling the moving reference frame because we use uh, this moving reference frame for the turbine to uh, represent the turbine rotation. But when you couple, when you couple the MRF with the porous model, it will give you a flow flip like this and there will be flow going to the blade so that, that's the problem, and we wonder how does this happen? And there could be many reasons because it's a very complex three-dimensional turbine simulation. And we, back then we went for Fluent to see whether Fluent can work. And that's our simulation result with ANSYS Fluent, which is much more reasonable. And I noticed that back then there is an option that uh, asking you whether you are using 
moving reference frame or not, if you choose you are, they are using the relative velocity and give you this result. So I further switch off that to say, I actually, I wrongly said up that I'm not using moving reference frame and get a very close result at OM4. So it means that in the porous zone, though the MRF is used, uh, when you couple the porous modeling, it's, it does not account for the relative mo uh, relative velocity. So, and I then we went to the GitHub to see whether they are already in, already works on uh, the relative velocity usage for porosity coupled with MRF frame, and we did find they are already about two years ago by Andrew Heather that already has the modified source code and we follow the instructions, uh, sorry, we follow the instructions and we eventually get closer, much closer results with Fluent. But actually, even now, we do not fully sure that uh, this, uh, the modification would be totally correct because this is a highly complex system. So uh, we actually have a nice plan to get a benchmark case with a, in a rotating system to see whether a, the fluent or the own form with coupled with MRF and port modeling will get a better prediction in this system. But in any case, they give us closer results and we further uh, move forward with the, with the flow physics. And this is a comparison of the tip vortices between the baseline case without the permeable tip and the new case, uh, the new design with the permeable tip where the dusty number is set uh, at 10 to minus 5, and you see a significant mitigation of the tip vortices. And we further compared the minimum CP along the tip vortex trajectory, and this is our main objective because we want to suppress cavitation, and the key thing to achieve that is to lift up this curve to increase the minimum CP to a uh, higher value. And we indeed have achieved that by, this is the baseline case, and these are the uh, designs with the tip permeability. And we see a lift up of the CP curve along the vortex trajectory. And we found the optimal uh, uh, dust number in the order of 10 to minus 5 that can always uh, increase the minimum CP by roughly 60%. And we further investigated the underlying physics. We use this vortex model to uh, correlate the minimum CP with the vortex intensity. So here you have this uh, uh, vortex circulation, and this is the vortex, uh, uh, vortex radius, and this is the blade tip speed, and beta is the uh, <laughs> is a constant depending on your vortex model. And we see a difference between the non-dimensional vortex intensity between the baseline design and the permeable tip design. And you see a significant drop of this non-dimensional vortexity. So we wonder how does this happen? We further checked the vortex uh, core radius alone and also the, uh, the vortex circulation and we see that the vortex core radius is significantly enlarged with the permeable design, but for the circulation itself, it barely changes. And uh, if we go back, we will see that a significant drop of RC and uh, little change of the water circulation and V tip is constant. So we see a significant change of the CP minimum. So we may mitigate the cavitation uh, significantly by this design. And actually, this can be visualized if you plot streamlines released from the blade tip. You see the water dimension is enlarged by this permeable tip design. And we also check different tip speed ratios from basically 4.5 to 7.5. Basically, this is the uh, design condition now. And this is the maximum currently the tidal turbines can go for if uh, it has cavitation problem probably here. And now if we can 
uh, increase this by 60%, something we may extend the maximum uh, tip speed ratio from roughly seven to nine or 10. So these are the conclusions here. So uh, we have numerically demonstrated that controlling tip losses through local permeability is a very promising approach to control tip losses cavitation uh, for tidal turbines according to a wide range of tip speed ratios. And the correct coupling between the MRF and port modeling need to be carefully tackled. And there is an optimal range of permeability that can significantly surprise the vortices and uh, has a great potential for mitigating the cavitation. Uh, the underlying physics is found to be that this permeable tip design can significantly enlarge the vortex dimension with little change to the circulation. And the influence on the turbulence pore, co uh, pore coefficient and thrust coefficient actually is very little. I do not show here, it's basically 0.2% change. And we aim to develop normal blade structures in future to produce an equivalent effect. This can be either achieved by using port media or new structural designs, for example, multiple small grooves to give the equivalent permeability. Okay, that will be all of my presentation. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Niro, for your very interesting talk. So, any questions to the presentation? Any question? Oh, okay, I have a quick question. So, uh, have you ever considered the structure, structure deformation uh, in your uh, winter by simulation? So, um, I want to know if the deformation um, have, have the large influence um, on the flow field or not. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. I think especially for wind turbines that the deformation at the blade tip is quite significant. Uh, for this uh, porous tip design, we actually tested different angle attacks and different uh, 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 pitch angle things. So we suppose the underlying physics will be the same, but when the blade deforms, I suppose there would be some changes, especially for the loading so that, and also may destroy the permeable tip structure. But that's the thing we need to consider in the next stage probably. And uh, yeah, definitely that's a good point. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.